and I'll tell you when we're actually live. <clears throat> no. Are we live now? Yeah. Hold up. Yeah, yeah, it's live. Oh, snap. Here we go. Another good one. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Uh, oh, I should probably send a messenger bomb blast. Yeah, do that right now. What's up, Hakeem? What's going on, brother? How many people we have on here now? Three. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, send out. What's up, Robin? What's going on, brother? Yeah, so we'll give everybody like a couple minutes to jump on here. As you guys know, Facebook's notifications are all out of whack recently. What's up, so. Brett? What's going on, dude? How are you doing? <clears throat> we haven't talked in a while. Uh, hold up. You can't hear us? Huh? No way. Can you guys hear us? We should be good. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's fine. He, did you probably did you guys hear us? Turn your speakers up, my brother. All right, man, we got 10 people on. Nice. Hold on now. Give me a sec. Um, I'll do a little intro. Hold up. You guys stoked to hear how Gabor went from zero to 33K a month in less than 120 days? Robin, that are you stoked to hear it? Woo! That's heavy. That's actually, it sounds heavy. <laughs> it does sound heavy, yeah. dude. Yeah. That is heavy. Sheesh. Matthew, what's up, man? Okay. Um, I just sent the messenger bot blast. So, um, all right, we got about 12 people on. What is going on, crew? Welcome. Uh, we recently did one of these interviews, Quran. You guys probably remember this. So, it's going to be a similar format to that. So, as Brian already touched on, one of our most successful clients, Gabor, whose last name I absolutely cannot pronounce and I will not attempt, no has, has got, he took his agency oh from zero and Gabor will talk about what he was doing before. Yeah, technically, Gabor wasn't at like negative two. Oh, that is right. I was just going to say, it was, he was in a negative because he had some, he was just doing some, some crazy stuff with employees and, and whatnot. So we helped him get out of that just crazy stuff. And he went from zero to where his agency is at now, which is about $33,000 a month. So guys, in this interview, we're going to talk, or Gabor is going to talk about exactly what he did to get there, some of his challenges, and a lot of the things he'll talk about are probably going to be things you guys can relate to. Um, so Gabor, dude, the microphone is yours. Take it away. Just talk to everybody. Let them know your story, man. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Gabor, and I'm... I'm living the pretty far away from everybody, I guess. Hungary, Central Europe, which is like 7 p.m. Oh, 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 7 p.m. here. So that was actually the first issue uh, with starting the you know overseas business, overseas business, uh, because obviously I need to work late or during the night. But before that, before I jump uh, and uh, you know started to work with you guys. I already started the agency and generated some negative margin because I started to work, uh, um, you know, I had my previous agency here in Hungary and it was successful, but I didn't like it because that was with big clients like Vodafone, Citibank and, you know, big clients. So I closed that and I started the US journey, I would say, uh, but uh, I started to, uh, run like one month free trials and you know this kind of really stupid stuff so i i didn't think through uh and uh you know i saw in the you know i joined the group uh you know the free group uh and jump in a conversation with brian and it was uh i honestly i already decided uh before we uh jump into the conversation I, i'm gonna join uh and uh and i joined and you know you know went through the training uh and 
my first thought was, okay, holy shit, that's gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> so, so, you know, the first stop was, okay, uh, my first month, and when I joined, that was middle of December. So, you know, it's like two, two, one week before, one week before Christmas. So, and I made my first sale before Christmas. Uh, because uh, my first my first rule was uh, everything I went through all the videos first and all the training first and and after that I went through again one by one uh, but I implemented everything so it's like uh, my rule was if I implement like 60 percent 60 percent you know all the stuff I'm I'm gonna get results and I got, I already got results, you know, the first, first sale, uh, after a week, uh, you know, after I went through, you know, implemented like 10%. But the whole story is, is actually I'm, I'm working in a bit different niche because I'm working for e-commerce club with e-commerce clients. And I started with email marketing because that's what I'm doing, by the way, for, uh, for a living in the last, I don't know, seven years. But in the first one and a half months, I did everything by myself. I had a team, but I, I need to do the account management and everything, uh, this kind of stuff. So it was a bit messy. Uh, uh, but, uh, but it was really important. Uh, I scheduled the time for work. So it's obviously that was like, I don't know, between eight hours and 10 hours per day if I have and obviously I need to work like I don't know sometimes run from 3 p.m to 3 a.m so mm -hmm. the first first one one and a half months that was that was really heavy but you know if I do something uh, I better off doing it you know like 100 percent uh, so, good boy. What in those first, like in those first 30, 60 days after you joined the program, what were just some of the big like changes that you made to like, cause you got a client pretty much in the first week and then you got clients really quickly after that. Can you think back to some of what the, the big like changes you had? Yeah, actually the, your favorite question. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, you know, like, like you know game changer uh because it's actually it's applicable for every type of uh every type of saying no you know like i would say fake no from clients so it's like they're for a lot of excuse um and that's first the second and also that's also i got from you guys is I'm always happy to walk away from the sale. Mm. And, you know, I, I, I started to feel the transition from the sales guy to the closer um, because I always willing to walk away from the sale. And after that, um, uh, and after that, the whole game is, you know, the whole conversation is changing uh, because they, they start to feel I'm not really here for the money. So I'm, mm -hmm. um, I'm here for making, you know, like a win-win business together, but that's gonna be a bigger win for them. So I always structure my offer. My offers is basically, I offer them a, a different type of solution. Only if we're talking about email marketing, but it, it can be everything, anything. Um, so a low end offer, middle offer, and a high end offer. And I always want to sell the uh, middle offer. So it's the middle offer is, is basically my core stuff. And it's like different type of solution, but it's, it's just packaging, basically. So, so they, can, they can feel they can choose. That's first. The second is actually uh, sometimes they go for a high, high end offer, which is like 10K a month which is like heaven, so <laughs> it's like 10K a month, you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm not gonna say no, but if I don't offer them, obviously they're not gonna buy it. And also um, I, 
I did, uh, I have nine clients at the moment. And I did, after one month, I did an interview and survey with them uh, to why, they, why, did they, uh, why did they join? You know, what was the decision? And, and the result, results was pretty interesting. Uh, because uh, because a lot of them answered, uh, they felt I genuinely want to help them, and mm. actually they told me if I offer 10k package, obviously I have clients for 10k package, so my service worth 10k as well. So they happily take the 4k package because it's it's like a bargain, you know, the middle middle package. But they can they can take the 10k package. Mm. So I would position like the 4k package is around 80% of my solution. So 80% and 100% is the 10k package. So they get they get the better deal for 4k and they can get like two and a half k the low end stuff. But that's positioned okay. That's for just beginners and that just for if you want to start uh, the stuff. Uh, but it's all about positioning the different offers, uh, so they can they can have a feeling they can choose, but normally they don't choose. You know, I drive them, and also the learning from you guys is I always drive the conversation. So mm -hmm. it's uh, I'm the alpha, and they can be beta or whatever, uh, uh, whatever other letter, but <laughs> delta doesn't matter. Uh, it, it as doesn't... long as you're the alpha, that's all oh, that really matters. All we don't care what they are. We just want to be the alpha. Yeah, uh, because they can sense even you know through the phone, they can sense the confidence. Uh, and also, other learning, I always prepare for the call. Uh, you know, for for the first touch, the first discovery call, and I provide them on the call some vibe. So it's like if they say no, if I say no, uh, they walk away with some value. It's, uh, you know, I, I got one client who actually four months ago, they were not that big. And now they became big. Uh, now they became clients. Mm. So, and that's uh, because they used the free tips I gave away to them. Solid, man. So that's, that's like long-term thinking. Uh, and also, you know, just to be a cool dude, which is I someday uh, I like to be. <laughs> if, if you stick around us long enough, it's bound to rub off on you. That's what I've, that's what I've been telling Sebastian for months. Keep talking, man. Keep talking. <laughs> I'm the OG. Just remember that. Um, so, dude, a lot of good stuff, man. It's, it's been awesome to watch you grow. Um, from when you first started working with us. So you talked, you touched on um, positioning. I think that was something really important that you talked about briefly. So now you mentioned that now you have a sort of this, this system of how you can position your calls so that almost no matter what, A, you're always going to be alpha and, you know, clients are always going to be able to see how you can help them. But before you started working with us, I want to kind of learn a little bit more about how you were positioning your calls because I think, you know, right now there are still a lot of people, even in this group that might be watching this live and that watch this after, that are still really struggling on their sales calls. And I think it'd be nice to kind of hear from somebody else, like what, if, if they were going through the same struggles. So like, what were some of the things you were going through on your sales calls prior to jumping into high, uh, agency hyper growth? Uh, yeah, the biggest mistake probably every guy or most of the guy makes, they actually talk too much. Mm. So, so it's, it's. Actually, you know, it's like, I think there is an evolution from, from an early sales type of, you know, activity. And the closer is like, you will talk less and ask more question. And, you know, if you ask question and get, uh, you know, get answers, you will modify your, you know, way to ask uh, under question. So it's mm -hmm. like, what I changed now, I have, uh, I had uh, a written map, a written map, uh, you know, if I ask this question and I got this type of answer or that type of answer, I will ask that one, that one. So it's like, 
you know, like a question map. Now it's in my head. So, you know, I practiced a lot because that was, you know, probably we should talk about the uh, uh, game with the numbers. So obviously if they want to get results, they need to kind of calculate back how many contact they need to make, how many, you know, like discovery first touch holes they need to make, how many proposals they need to, be to make, and, you know, this kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, the, the biggest takeaway is, is basically just a lot of times just shut up and it's <laughs> active listening. And it's like, uh, you know, uh, because, uh, and also don't try for the sale and don't try to be, uh, don't try to prove uh, you are good. If you are good, they're going to feel it. Uh, if you are not good, it just like uh, it's gonna, you know, after after you sign a contract, and if you are not your service is not good, you know, it's gonna come up and it's gonna be kind of issue, I would say. Um, 100%. I love that, man. I I one of the biggest worries I have for people that are new in sales is when they have like one of those frameworks that they think is gonna like fix their problems, right? Like. They say this, say this, because at the end of the day, you just get confused and you sound yeah. awkward and you're not really helping the person that you're talking to. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, you know, for me, that was the only reason it was useful because I listened a lot of, you know, uh, you know, a lot of calls with from you guys and from other guys. Uh, and actually, uh, and also a lot of mentoring from you guys. Uh, and actually, you know, I, I kind of developed like a, I don't know, two sheet filled mm -hmm. with questions. And I, okay, how should I structure it? So what should be the ideal conversation? I would say that, yeah, that's, that's the phrase, the ideal conversation. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the, my biggest takeaway was at the, at the beginning, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not an American, so I'm not really good naturally with small talk. So it's like, you guys are much better than, but, <laughs> you know, I will and I am. But uh, what I developed is actually a directed small talk. So on the small talk, I ask question I will use later and I will, you know, point back later, even about the family, about the weather, whatever. Uh, where they live or, you know, what kind of, uh, what kind of business they have and whatever uh, I ask at the beginning, I will point back. And from that one, you know, that's kind of similar when you get a, like a cold call and the sales guy is actually a lot of times telling your, you know, your name. That's like a man. Sometimes they overuse it, but for example, if you get a call and they don't try to push hard, but, you know, make it personal and they use all the information when they, you know, later the call when what they got from you, it's actually, I don't know, it's kind of mindful stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because, because after that, they start to feel we are like uh, starting to become, uh, I, I wouldn't say friend, but it's like bodies. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, like, it's nothing to do with business. It just like, you know, normal stuff. Love that, man. There's 23 people watching this live with us right now. And something Gabor, that I, I think is interesting. I, I don't think anybody watching this is doing over 33 K a month yet. I'd be surprised. You guys can let us know in the comments, but I talk to a lot of people who want to jump in the program and, often entrepreneurs have goals like I want to hit 10k a month and 20k a month and 30k a month and I remember like when I was younger I would see people like you and be like oh my goodness like I can't can't even believe that's real right and so for you doing it in less than 120 days what message would you have to people who are in like that less than 5k a month range that maybe have some limiting beliefs that getting to 30k is actually possible yeah, uh, it's actually, uh, I remember a conversation with you like two months ago uh, when we started to work on, you know, like systemizing my, you know, whole stuff and offering other services. 
And you mentioned is like doing 30K and doing like 10K is a completely different game because it's like you need to do differently the whole business, structuring the whole business. And it's like it, uh, it, it should be like you should think through the whole business and the processes. And the processes is the key because obviously what, uh, I call it net time, networking time which is like, I need to work on business development and sales. Mm -hmm. it's like the uh, less time I have for it, the less money I'm going to make. Uh, so the biggest, uh, for me, the biggest takeaway is actually early uh, when I started uh, with you guys, I calculated my numbers. I'm kind of a number guy. So it's like, I calculated my numbers. So I'm in a different niche, so uh, I just started with um, uh, with cold emailing. So, so let's take this example. I I bought a list and I emailed them, but they they were like relevant uh, to my niche, and I watched the response rate, and I tried different emails, which mm -hmm. is like I provided value for them and didn't try to be too pushy. Uh, and I watched the response rate and also, you know, just calculating, I send, first I send a hundred email a day and I got 10 response and I got two guys on the call, uh, on the first call. But that was not enough because mm -hmm. my numbers just, you know, uh, just the math is, is was not, not right. So I increased the number of you know sent emails and it can be LinkedIn, it can be email, it can be whatever, Facebook. Um, uh, and I needed to work. Okay, how can I convert? You know, like I, I would say there are mic micro conversion points. The first, they respond on the email. The second, they get on the first call. The third, you you know you send them, you know you give them proposal and how many proposals you close. So uh -huh. there is like a conversion ratio between them. So my goal was I like to get three new sales per month, which is like now three new sales is like, I don't know, on Monday I got three new sales. But, uh, <laughs> well, yeah, okay, that was that. So, sorry, we can't all be, uh, can't all have it as good as before. <laughs> three sales well, in a day. Yeah, but you know, that was a lucky day. So, uh, so, so what I realized is, okay, I need to work on the numbers. So, and obviously I needed to allocate uh, time for it. Obviously the emails can be automated, you know, everything which can be automated should be automated, but everything that can be automated should dedicate, you know, on your calendar, you should dedicate time for it because mm -hmm. uh, it just, uh, without scheduling, it's just gonna be a dream. It just, uh, and, and other important factor, and that's actually also, you know, from you guys is I really started to work on myself. So it's like, there is a really strong me time, uh, which is like me and self-development and how, how can I put myself into the state uh, of winning calls? Because if I feel lazy before the call, that's gonna be a shit. Uh, that's going to be a shitty call. I'm not going to be on the good mood. And I'm going to be curious because that's actually the curiosity. Actually, that's the, the number one secret, at least for me, because I'm curious. Can I help or not? And if I can help, uh, can I, uh, can, they, can they afford me? And yeah. if they're not, okay, that's going to be later. So oh, that's, that's one. And also uh, how to be a consultant versus a sales guy. So for the whole process. So on emails, on calls, on reply emails, because, uh, you know, sometimes I send them back a reply email, which is like the reply was, okay, great email, just jump into the call. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And after a few months, you get also referrals because I get referrals too. 
if you are good. <laughs> awesome, man. So we have some people on here that jumped on uh, kind of midway through. So what I want to do now is I have a couple questions for you. That way the, the new people that just jumped on, we can kind of fill them in on yeah. like the big chunks of your story. So my first question, man, is before you came into agency hypergrowth, you know, you already talked about this, you know, a little bit um, about kind of the stuff that you were doing, but if you had to name like two to three of the biggest challenges you were facing, the things that you just couldn't get past before working with us, what would you say they were within your agency? Yeah. First, what should be the sales process? Hmm. Because I had no process. That was totally random. You know, what I outlined with the numbers, that was like no numbers, no, I just, I just felt sometimes, uh, I think a lot of people can relate. They, I felt I did a lot of work without results, but if I take a look now, that was not work. That was like, okay, jumping from one task to another uh, without any strategy, you know. Uh, how I'm gonna make it? It's just pure luck. If I get a sale, that was just pure luck. And mm -hmm. sometimes it was not luck because uh, I got a sale for free trial, and that was like minus thousand dollar because I spent <laughs> on it, and they got a sale that was horrible. And uh, yeah, that was first. The second is I talk too much. Mm. Uh, because I tried to solve all the problem on the call. A lot of times, actually, solved all, all the problem, all the questions answered on the call. It was so stupid. Because, uh, you know, if I solve the whole life uh, on the call, it just doesn't make sense uh, to pay me. Uh, that was second. Uh, the third. I, I was not that confident to ask for a sale. Hmm. Just easy then, you know, it's really easy. It's actually, it doesn't have to be too pushy, uh, but ask for a sale and shut up. And you know, the classic stuff. Everybody teaches that that's really easy to listen, you know, from advice, as an advice, but to implement, uh, that was really hard for me. Beautiful. I, yeah, man. Makes perfect sense. It's like how uh, the famous boxer Mike Tyson said, everybody's got a plan. So you get in there and you get punched in the face. Everything sounds good in theory, but it's a whole nother ballgame to actually go and do it. Cool. So you had some stuff you were struggling with before. Just named them. And now let's fast forward to now, now that your agency is wildly successful. What do you feel like, would you say on the inverse of the last question, would you say is like the two or the three things that have been the biggest takeaways and the biggest things that you feel We've been able to help you with um, here at Agency Hypergrowth. All right. Uh, There's just too many to count, man. Yeah. Yeah. The, the biggest one is how to be 120% sure you're going to make it. If you follow the stuff, it just, and, you know, it just like, obviously, if you, you know, follow the stuff, you know, in theory, and you're going to eat a whole bunch of sandwiches and uh, not going to do anything. That's not going to work. Uh, yeah. So obviously, um, if you schedule a time for it, and for example, if you won the first month or first second month, you don't get any results. You need to appreciate the little results as well. So, so that's uh, because... Okay, I, you know, I got lucky. I, I wouldn't say luck, but uh, okay, you know, we can call it luck uh, at the first week. Uh, but if I haven't got the sale, uh, I still, even today, I still would pursue it because I think that's my stuff. So, so that's that's first. The second is uh, how to. You know, the process, uh, the whole process, because you, you can be confident with that, you know, like, a, and now I'm using completely different process when I, when I started, because I used, you know, like an easy process you guys uh, 
uh, you guys showed me at the beginning. Now I have like different processes for everything. For paid traffic, I generate like uh, leads from paid traffic. Uh, uh, I outsourced um, I outsourced all some of the implementation and all the process for that. So I I became like a process addict guy. So. Good. Uh, so that second, third is I have to close this fucking sale. <laughs> <laughs> Line of the century. Dude, we gotta make a shirt just for that. I love that. So uh, that's that's actually the most important part, I guess. <laughs> you, you know, it can be process. It can be you can learn a lot of stuff, but. Uh, you know, that's a skill. So it's like, I don't know, um, learning how to ride a bicycle or um, learning how to drive. So it's like, it takes time. And you need to, you know, for example, for driving, you can take a test, you know, a theory test, and, you know, but you still can drive. So you need to drive a lot to get experience. And yeah, you know, it's just like the only reason I I'm making this amount of money is is actually you know I made a lot of calls. It's like I just calculated and actually I made two hundred and fifty calls. Uh, you know, within one hundred and twenty twenty days. So it's that that's an average. I I had days when I had like ten calls, which is mm -hmm. like. You know, like a bit extreme. After that, I didn't even want to talk anybody. <laughs> even, even, even with my dog either. He just like okay, <laughs> shut up, everybody. I just no more talk for silence. Um, so, Gabor, it's pretty safe to say your life's pretty different now. Six months yeah. later, and will continue to be different. We're, there's 20 people watching this right now and we're going to use this replay to show to people in the future because it's so inspirational. And Gabor, there's going to be a lot of people who are on the fence about joining Agency Hypergrowth and working with us, maybe because of finances, they're scared, they're, they got burned in the past, they might not, whatever the reason may be. What is your words and counsel to those people that are on the fence about working with us okay uh if i need to close them uh i would say this one they need to uh they they should make some decision some important decision the first is how bad they want it because uh you guys just showing other people if they want this bad enough they can make it and you know the easier way so if the, the first question is uh, how bad they want it, they want to change it real or just faking it and, you know, just telling their friends they starting the agency. So they want to start or improve, you know, like a real business or just, you know, like working for myself and I can, I can post on Facebook and whatever. So that's the first question. The second is do they have a dedicated or can they make, dedicated time for implementation. Everybody can make it, by the way. So if the first question is yes, the second question is, can they make dedicated time for? for? And uh, the third question is, how much time, uh, how much time uh, they, you know, dedicate uh, for a whole project? To get the first sale, to get you know like a how much time and the second and the fourth question is uh, was what is the worst that can happen if they join and what is the worst that can happen uh, because if they see as a cost and you know the classic one if they see as a cost and not an investment uh, uh, that's not gonna work. So obviously, uh, invest in yourself and your business, it's always a great deal. And you know, the most important question they need to ask, that is the fifth one, is are you guys a real or a fake? 
And because I know there are, you know, I'm working in e-commerce, you know, 99% of the coaches and mentors are fake. And all the internet marketing and agency, you know, everybody starts agency now. Uh, uh, but uh, nobody actually teaches you, teaches you a system. Because I'm 100% confident if, you know, if they join, they have a time, you know, they dedicate time for it, put an effort in it, not just like, okay, watch the video and, you know, everything is going to be great. Uh, because, you know, the best example is Karan. Karan is like put a lot of, you know, like structural, you know, post every day, the progress. And, you know, as far as I saw, and he made it happen because he was committed. So the commitment was there. Uh, the skill was there, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. So the last question is: If they feel you guys are real, which is definitely the you are, uh, um, they just you know nothing to lose situation. So I, actually, that I would I would ask myself this five question because actually that was that was the five question I asked myself before I jumped into the call. Uh, uh, with you, but that was already, you know, like decided before the call. I would say awesome, that. man. Love it. So, guys, um, we have, I think, 20, about 20 of you guys on here now. So, let's open this up to some questions. Um, let's do you guys it. can, yeah, you guys can just drill us and drill Gabor about uh, pretty much anything you guys want to talk about. If you guys want more clarity on something. Whatever it is, let's get some questions coming in. Anything else you guys want to add, Brian? Good boy. No, man. I gotta hop in to my next call, so I'll let you wrap things up from here. Cool. Good boy. I love you, man. Hundred k a month is right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. It's gonna be. It's gonna, even this year, I'm gonna hit it. Hundred percent, man. See you guys. Cool. Cool. All right, um, so we've got, I think we have 18 of you guys on here now. So let's get some questions coming in. Again, you can ask, uh, I mean, Gabor's the star of the show, so if you guys wanna ask me stuff, you can, but um, just, yeah, drop some stuff in the comments. So let's see. Yeah, man, it is pretty crazy though. Like you came in and literally you started firing off. I think it was the first you came in close to Christmas time and it was like a week in, I think you landed your first client for, I think it was the, it was the 18 K client that you landed. Yeah. Uh, Crazy yeah. bro. It was a Christmas present. <laughs> yeah. An early Christmas present. That's not too bad of a Christmas present, honestly. Nah, thank you guys. Not too bad. <laughs> well, dude, look, we helped you, you know, we gave you a lot of guidance and we helped you restructure a lot of things, but dude, just as much as we helped you, you know, it's, it's also your, your effort, you know, you are to, to congratulate for success as well. Um, Zach says, how do you catch a potential client's attention? That's a good question. How do you catch an attention? So without giving, without giving away all the goods, cause good boy, I know you love to give people value just like myself without giving away everything. Right. Cause we gotta, gotta save some stuff for guys like you. Um, yeah, you can, you can just give away some of the good frameworks that we, that we teach. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, catch attention is actually first I pinpoint, you know, in my, uh, day pain points. So I, I find the pain points. That's the first. Second, I ask questions about it. You know, it's, it depends on, you know, like posting content is different than how do you, uh, how do you catch attention on email? Because cold emailing and, you know, like LinkedIn and whatever, it's, it's like a conversational stuff. It's different. Uh, but on, on, I'm not really, still not really good on content posting because I was lazy. So until now, but uh, on content, uh, it just, uh, I would, I would post about, you know, the problems and uh what could be the solution but i wouldn't outline them the solution the how how 
because how it's it's basically your job to do it you know it's like how how they're gonna do it but the what what is the what is the solution for it that's perfect sense and you know makes sense for them and if they can do it or probably you know the cheaper guys or i don't know they're gonna they're gonna try by themselves if they like it and they're gonna fail and that's cool uh, not cool but it's it's uh uh it's okay because because after that they're gonna come and you know come after you and ask okay how much do you charge and there's gonna yes. be way too much for them still and they're gonna go to cheaper solution first uh, from other guys and probably they're gonna fail and come after you and you're gonna charge even more and they're gonna get on board yeah uh, Right. At least sometimes that's the case for me. That's first the, the, via email on LinkedIn. Uh, I would, uh, what I would do is actually, you know, I'm an email marketer. So in, in email, uh, the email was pretty straightforward sometimes. Uh, um, and tricky, you know, tricky subject line, tricky type, because, you know, all my emails, you know, I had like a bit harder situation because I emailed, cold email to web shops, you know, e-commerce stores. And most of the times I get actually an automated response from customer service. So I needed to make sure the customer service is actually, uh, first, they perceive my message. The second, it's going to be interested in, interesting enough, even the customer service girl or guy to forward answered if the owner say, says it, uh, I'm going to get a response. So that was kind of a harder situation than, you know, usually uh, you guys just, you know, like emailing, uh, you know, I don't know, the uh, smaller businesses, which is like sometimes it's, it's directly the owner, which is like for me, that would be heaven. But uh, so on email, it's actually also... Uh, that was for me, that was, you know, just an example. My first email, uh, I stated I help guys, uh, help e-commerce stores who actually generate less than 20% from email, which is like I already, you know, like niche them, uh, my idea clients, because my idea clients generate 20% le uh, less than 20%. And actually they can feel, okay, uh, they still don't know how I generate, you know, how I help them and, you know, this kind of stuff. And my later emails is actually outlines, you know, how, uh, for example, my third email is, did you see, did you use this automation? And I outline one automation, email automation for them. So giving, giving them value. And actually I got most of the sales from this third email. Um, and actually a lot of, I got a lot of fuck off as well from, from the guys who actually got really pissed off. Uh, yeah, man. Emailing them that, but that's, that's pretty much it. Part of the game. Awesome, brother. Um, so Joe Gonzalez asks, I don't know if you're still on here, Joe, but uh, the best way to outsource. I could probably answer that question. It's pretty, a lot of it's straightforward stuff. Um, you know, man, and this goes for everybody that's watching when you're, kind of trying to figure out who you should outsource to. There are just kind of like some cardinal rules you want to look for. Number one, have they worked in your industry before? Ideally, you have a, a defined market. Um, do they have, you know, past case studies that, that can, you know, show you they actually know what they're doing in their industry, right? Because if you talk to somebody and like, hey, you are you like an expert at, you know, advertising for whatever industry? And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm the top guy. Okay, well, cool. What have you done? It's like, well, I don't know, right? If they don't have anything, it's, it's tricky for outsourcing. Um, that's probably the biggest thing. Um, and a lot of it is intangibles, right? So when you're talking to people that you're considering to hire as your outsourcer or your contractor, um, a lot of it is just, does this person seem shady, right? Like obviously, as you guys know, it's the internet. There's plenty of bad stuff out there, plenty of shady people. So you want to try to avoid those people at all costs. Um, and again, a lot of it's just being able to pick up on people. So those are the big things. Can this person uh, be trusted? Do you vibe with the person? Do you feel comfortable working together with them? And can they actually do what they say they can do? That's usually a good start. 
Um, Sam asks, I'm new to this group. Is your service a course or a mentorship? I can 100% answer that question, but I mean, dude, I'll give this up to you, Gabor, because again, you're the star of the show. You're one of our top clients, so you can, you can touch on that if you want. Somebody asks, is this, is what we do is agency have a growth course or is it mentorship? Like, what the hell is it? Probably a lot of you guys have that same question as well. Uh, actually, you guys have like, the, for me, uh, the most incredible, you know, like combined stuff, which is like, it's, it's included the course, but it's, it's, doesn't really matter because you can, yeah, it matters, but you can consume a lot of contents everywhere. You guys put together like a really structured content. It's like the step-by-step -step stuff, but more important, you guys mentoring from zero to hero, the guys, because, you know, consuming a lot of course and, you know, like probably most of the guys, you know, already bought a lot of course or, um, uh, but you know, you know, any content without implementation help for me, it just it doesn't make sense. So, so for me, uh, all, all this one together was, was a really great deal. Uh, but the mentoring was, and also, you know, the group calls, you know, seeing other guys, how they're doing, what kind of issues they have, because the learning from other guys, uh, it's not that effective that learning from your own fuck ups, uh, because it's obviously, but less painful. It just, it's, it's just much less painful. And, you know, uh, a lot of times I actually, I, when I learned, you know, on the call, call uh, from the call, something, and on the next hour, I'm, I had the call and already used it, which is like helps you re implement really fast. Yeah, spot on, brother. Um, so, Sam, if you have any more questions about just agency hypergrowth in general, I would highly encourage you to reach out to Mr. Brian. Um, I don't know if you were here earlier in the interview. He was on. Um, he had to jump off. He had another phone call. But you can message Brian Ostermiller. Um, he is one of the admins of the group. So him and I are partners, and we run agency hypergrowth. So, again, if you have any questions, hit him up. Um, Joe Gonzalez asks, uh, advice to somebody who has zero clients, no case studies, no website. The only thing I have is the skills. How do I close a deal? All it's right. all you, bro. It's all you, man. Take it away. First off, you don't really need case studies. You don't need website either. Uh, I don't know what kind of skills we are talking about because it's a really big statement. I have a skills. Uh, uh, but uh, it depends what kind of skills you have. Uh, but if you have a skill you like to monetize, and uh, I would I would first start this. Okay, I told. By the way, I told Andrew I, I'm quite good at sales, and I was really uh, okay. I would say you know I can sell a lot of stuff. I could sell a lot of stuff, but now I can close. So it's like it's a different skill, but. Let's, let's say you have a skill on Facebook ads, whatever. Let's, uh, uh, but you still need to learn how to sell it, how to close it. Uh, so I would advise to, okay, you have a skill to implement. That's, that's great. You don't really need case studies. You don't need a lead uh, website because that's, I think uh, this kind of question come only prospects who don't really trust you, but that's on you. Uh, so you need to build up and you don't really need, uh, you know, I, I didn't have any website. I still don't have a website actually. Um, uh, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. No website and 33K a month. Yep, that's right. There you go, my friends. Keep going, sorry, man. Yeah. You know, I have a landing page, I generate leads, but you know, that's for just paid traffic. Um, um, so you don't need a website, you don't need case studies. You, it's, it's really helpful later because later, you know, I, you know, I put on the landing page and generated leads, but not for closing. If you wanna close via case studies, that's, that's not really good. You, you wanna get, sometimes, you know, uh, I only send, you know, some kind of previous results to get on the call somebody. But you can get on the call somebody, you know, 
uh, without case studies. It's just gonna be, I don't know, out of 100 emails, you get like, I don't know, five guys, not 10 on the call, but who cares? It's gonna be five call. And the number one skill you need to develop is, okay, what's gonna be uh, your intentional sales process? On the call, before the call, after the call, how do you follow up? Uh, how do you convert them, you know, like, I would say, like, for me, written proposal, you're just sending out proposal, it's just the biggest killer ever. I would ban it, this activity, from anybody. Uh, because it just doesn't make sense. You, you're not going to make any sales uh, from, like, sending over written proposal, which is, like, for me, yeah, maybe big companies, they get sales. Uh, and uh, it's how do you propose to the client how to uh how to, for me that was that was a really intentional structuring on the you know proposal call sometimes on the first call i turn into proposal call and you know call the deal on the first but it's it doesn't have to be this way you know you can you can you know like set up your own sales system but yeah that's a system that's the cool uh the key uh for a whole staff because you need to develop the system. So you have a skills. I don't, I don't know what kind of skills do you have, but probably if you have like Facebook skills, you need to be able to sell it. So package it. But the packaging is not a website. The packaging Spot is spot on. Offers. Yeah, 100%, man. Yeah, it's funny. Like if the proposal is almost, it's almost meaningless a lot of times. Like we, we don't teach, like the way we have our sales structures, the proposal doesn't sell anything. Like you're not using the proposal to close the deal. Um, everything happens on the call and through the discovery process and you know, some of the other things that we teach and the frameworks and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, man, you hit the nail on the head. And by the way, <laughs> you uh, wrote it's, it's Facebook ads. And that's yep. quite funny because I, I started to sell Facebook ads. I never sold Facebook ads before. So, yep. it's, uh, so I, I'm quite good on Facebook ads, but I outsourced it. So yeah. it's like not the whole stuff, but you know, I implemented a system and I have a system for Facebook ads. Uh, and I created, um, by the way, for Facebook ads, you can create a lot of content because it's, it's like, okay, how do you scale a campaign? How do you optimize it? Uh, how do you optimize you know, the creative? Uh, it's a lot of stuff. How do you set up rules? Uh, because nobody really talks about it because obviously that's agency stuff, but few rules you can, uh, the automated rules, uh, you can talk about it on post. And on Facebook ads, I did pay traffic, but on organic, I would go to groups and post a lot of content. If you don't really have, you know, case study and clients, doesn't really matter. It just like, it should look like you already have and you know your stuff because if you don't know your stuff you think you know facebook ads and sometimes some guy gonna ask advanced question ah that's gonna be painful uh but if you really really know know it uh you know you will get your first clients within you know a week just like you man let an 18k client in a week pretty crazy stuff yeah. um so yeah, man, spot on again. And what's cool is now, Gabor, you know, again, partly because of what we've helped you with, but also because of how much effort you've put into implementing what we've shown you. I mean, man, you have a sales process that you can take and you can sell any service that you want because it's, as you said, man, it's all about positioning and showing them how whatever it is you have to offer can solve their deepest, deepest pain and a problem that keeps them up at night. So yeah, man, you're in a good spot. So yeah, thank you guys. Of course, my brother. Um, cool. I think that's it for the questions. Um, if anybody has anything else, you can drop it in now. But um, yeah, dude, thank you for coming on. This was awesome. It was so fun. I'm really glad we got a chance to get your story out there. Um, I hope for those of you guys that watch this, that are watching this live and that watch this on the replay, I hope this has been inspiring. Um, again, this is Gabor, one of our most successful clients. We help him go from zero, uh, actually not zero, negative $2,000 a month. Yeah to over $32,000 a month. And I mean, honestly, man, I could see you hitting 50 by end of the summer and probably a hundred K a month by the end of the year. Um, That's going to be yeah. a Christmas present for myself. 
Yeah, yeah. I understand, man. And by the way, guys, if you have any questions related to Sebastian services, you know, the group and anything, you can also write me. Um, yep. I'll, I'll tag, so Gabor, I'll tag you in the comments and I'll also tag you in the, in the description for the live right. video. Um, right. Okay. Awesome, guys. This has been fun. And uh, yeah, talk to yeah. you guys soon. Peace. All right.